Whether you're working on a YouTube channel or a podcast, succeeding without a plan is something that's really tough to do. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I think a good analogy is that it's a new year, and that means that the gyms are going to get a sudden influx of new people that have decided that they want to get into shape. And a large group of them are going to walk into the gym without a plan and just kind of float around from machine to machine rather than focusing on a specific set of exercises for the day. The people that are successful at the gym uh, are people that say, okay, today is back and biceps, tomorrow is chest and triceps. They make a plan before they go. And making a YouTube channel or a podcast is really the same thing. Now, I myself am very guilty of this. My main channel I never made a plan for. It was always just kind of floating from video to video. And I feel like it held that channel back. Now, in spite of my lack of planning, it has nearly 60,000 subscribers and almost 10 million views as I record this right now. But if I had planned my channel ahead of time, rather than simply reacting in the moment to things, I think it would be doing much better. And that's what I want to talk about today. Making a plan for your channel in order to increase your chances of success. Now, for this to work, you really want to be making evergreen content. In fact, you should always strive to make evergreen content as it makes growth so much easier. So even if you're doing a news-based channel, like my gaming channel, for instance, you should try to support your news content with evergreen content as far ahead as you can. That way, you can work on those evergreen videos that'll do the most to grow your channel when you get a lull in the news cycle. So for this, we're going to be using Google Sheets as a tool in order to plan everything, but you can use pretty much any spreadsheet that you want. So most of this is going to be fairly self-explanatory, but there's a couple of things that I want to point out. First off, I used to just keep all of my ideas in like a Google Doc. So like I just had one Google Doc, and if I had an idea for a video, I would go into that Google Doc and add it. And since switching over to a spreadsheet, it's made it easier for me to track things, which is why I have all of these check boxes uh, that you can see here under scripted, shot, B-roll, edited, and posted. One of the things that I feel is really useful, and I'm going to kind of stay with the exercise routine here, is just getting reps, doing things over and over the same way. You get better at it as you go. Having these check boxes almost forces me to do things in the same way each time. So I sit down and I come up with an idea for a video and I write a script for it and I check that off. Well, now I know the next thing that I have to do for that video is I need to shoot the A roll for that video. When I finish that, then I check that off. Next, I need to come up with all of the B roll that I'm going to shoot and I shoot that and check that off and then I edit it together and then eventually I post it. So having these little check boxes there means that I'm not kind of flailing around doing things as they occur to me, but I, I basically have a checklist of things that I need to do. Now, on the left hand side, we have a, a, a spot for what is the idea? This is not necessarily the title of the video. It's just the general idea. And you can see that it's blue because there is a link to the actual script that I'm writing for that particular video. So if I were making a YouTube channel all about movies, I've got, you know, the history of the movie Psycho. Uh, black and white horror is better and how they pulled off that scene uh, from the ring. You know, the scene that I'm talking about. Uh, so I came up with like three ideas for a movie YouTube channel to make videos about. And then the next thing that I did is I just kind of dropped those into the idea section. Now, in this column right here, under series, uh, what I have under there is basically some drop down menus where I pick like what exactly is the overall idea, like which category would this fit into for my videos? You can make as many categories as you want. And you're probably sitting there and thinking, why would I want to do that? Well, that's going to be very obvious when I show you the script in a second. Okay. So we'll come back to the series in just a little bit. 
over here I have date posted and then just gonna be whatever date that I actually post it. And then I have, uh, I think these are called smart cards. So if I go into uh, smart chips, uh, so if I go into insert smart chips and I come down here to rating, it puts that little five star rating in here. So what does that look like? Well, when I post that, um, I'm going to look at it after, you know, in, in the first 24 hours. And I want to put down how I feel about how that video is performing for my channel in that first 24 hours. The reason that I feel like this is very important to do is because when you start to see some success in your in your uh, YouTube channel, like maybe you had a couple of videos and they had 100 views, and then you get a video that has 1,000 views. Well, you're going to feel like, oh my God, like I done it, it's, it's doing really, really well. My YouTube channel is taking off. But then you put out another video and it drops down to 100 views again. And you're like, oh no, what did I do wrong? By putting down how the video, how you felt about the performance of the video at the time that it, that it actually happened, uh, that's going to indicate that it, it kind of gets rid of that feeling of constantly comparing it to your last video. So you'll end up doing like overall, you'll be like, okay, I'm starting to get an idea of how my videos should perform for me. So let's say that, you know, this particular video, it's my first video and it did really, really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, let's, let's say that, that it did really well. I'm going to say it's five stars. Now I don't do two stars or four stars, but you only have a choice to do um, five stars. So I do one star, three stars or five stars, three stars. If it's, you know, about how I expected uh, five stars, if it performed better than I expected and one star, if it performs worse than I expected. But then what I do is I come back after 90 days. So 90 days after whatever the date was posted, uh, I'll come back to this video and I'll see how many views does it have at that point. So maybe after, you know, the first 24 hours or something, my, my video had a thousand views. Okay. Well, I, I was really happy with that. So I hit five stars, but 90 days later, holy cow, it's got 30,000 views. That's really, really good. So I'm going to put 30,000 in there and I'm going to be like super happy about that. Then we look at this, this uh, video idea about black and white being better. And I post that video and it gets like a hundred views. And I'm like, Oh, I was, I thought that that would probably do about 500 views, you know? So it didn't do as well as I thought. So I'm going to put a one star on that reminding myself that when I posted that video, it didn't do as well as I thought it was going to. But sometimes YouTube find takes a while to find the audience that wants to watch your video. And sometimes a video will take off long after you've posted it well after you have forgotten about it and you go back and you look and like the reason I found some of this sometimes is because somebody will leave a comment on an old video of mine and I'll be like, oh, people are still watching that. And then I'll click on it and I'll see how it's doing and I'll be surprised at how well it's done. So then when I come back after 90 days, you know, this video, it had one star. It didn't perform very well, but maybe after 90 days, it has 50,000 views. That's really, really good. And by putting this information into this spreadsheet, because it's hard to look at a bunch of videos at once on YouTube analytics, but by putting this information in your spreadsheet, it kind of helps you to get rid of that negative feeling every time that a video doesn't perform well right away. Uh, so that's the performance chart on here. Now, all the way back over here to the, the scripts and what, what, what the series has to do with this. So let's say I click on my script for the history of psycho, uh, which is right here. And, um, you know, I'm obviously not going to write a full script for a fake video. Like this is not what my channel is about. Uh, but notice in here, I give a spot where you can come up with as many different titles, uh, that you want. So, you know, title one, title two, title three, 
eventually I land on a title and I'm like, okay, well, this is the one that I'm going to go with. I, so I checked that little box, but I also have backups in case that video doesn't perform very well right out of the box. I can be like, well, maybe if I change the title to something else, uh, maybe that'll help fix it. Um, usually I tend not to do this because I try and figure out my title and thumbnail ahead of time. And then I craft my introduction to kind of support that title and thumbnail. But if you're clever enough, sometimes you can craft your, your intro to your video so that like no matter which of the titles that you came up with will kind of apply. And that way people will feel like, oh, okay, he, he, he paid off his title and thumbnail right away in his intro. What else does he have to say? That's the thinking that I have behind this. Under thumbnails, I will usually post, I will make multiple thumbnails for each video that I'm making, and I will just paste them in here, just so I can go back and look later on and see what, what titles and thumbnails have worked for me in the past and just kind of get some ideas. And then my talking points. So here I have a hook, Topic one with a little micro hook, like something like, hey, remember, I'm going to show you this thing later, so stick around. That's a, that's a micro hook. And I do that for a couple of different topics. But here's the thing that is why I have that series. Okay, so this is my outro. And I, a lot of people are like, don't do an outro. But this is not a traditional outro where people are like, hey, make sure you subscribe and like and leave a comment and, you know, uh, follow me on social media and all that other stuff. In this case, I'm just kind of still in the middle of the video. It seems like, especially if you don't like have your mouse over it and you can't see that the, the little track thing is going across the bottom. And I can look at this and, you know, what I can say at that point is, hey, which version of Psycho is your favorite? For me, it has to be the original because black and white horror is just better. And if you want to know why I think black and white horror is just better, then check out this video right here. And that helps you generate what you what I think are called session times. Uh, so basically, you know, somebody watching your video and then watching the next video and then watching the next video after that, which is a really good signal to YouTube that, hey, recommend this person's stuff for this viewer. And I think that that helps a lot. And you can see that it, this is in blue, which means it is linked to my next script, which is all about why black and white horror is better. And the reason that I have those little uh, things in my content calendar about what, like what kind of video it is, is so that when I'm trying to figure out what video do I want to link to at the end of this video, like when I'm writing my script, I can go to my content calendar and I can be like, okay, this is a, this is a, uh, this is a video about, you know, black and white movies. So I want to mention another black and white movie at the end because the person who's watching it is interested in that particular topic. Maybe I'm talking about um, a viewer request. I mean, like maybe a viewer had sent in an idea for, hey, can you talk about this movie? So I can do a viewer request topic, you know, cover everything that I had to talk about for that particular movie. And then at the end I can say, oh, and by the way, here's another viewer, viewer requested topic right here. Or, you know, and I can go to my calendar here and say, oh, I go through all of the viewer requested topics and pick one that matches with that video really, really well. So that's why I have these uh, these series. And this is just a drop down menu and you can edit this if you want. So if you hit the edit button, it brings it up and you can add as many different things in here. So maybe I want to have a, you know, a section uh, about comedy movies. Uh, I can do that and then I'll hit done and it'll ask me, do I want to apply that to all? And I'll say yes. And then when I come down here, I'll be like, oh, this, this, this thing is about the hangover is about comedy or whatever. So then I've got that right there. All right. Now let me move this out of the way and I'll close that. Okay. So that's, uh, that stuff. Now these hidden things right here, the reason that I have these hidden is because not everybody is going to have advertisers, uh, especially when you're starting out, or maybe you just don't want to have advertisers at all. So what do I have hidden here? Well, I have 
things that I wanted to keep track of when you start dealing with advertisers. And so I put all of that stuff in there. And what I'm going to do, whoops, I'm going to leave that right there. I'm just going to move my stupid face over here instead. And let's take a look at these, uh, this advertiser stuff uh, that I have here. So first off, let's say that I'm doing a movie for, or a, a video for the history of the movie Psycho or something. And maybe, um, maybe MoviePass is my advertiser, okay? So I just put that in there so I can track, oh, I had MoviePass before. Um, and then I'm gonna write down the price that they paid. The reason I'm doing this is because, you know, you might have a same advertiser come back to you each time. And if they keep coming back, then it must mean that they're happy with the work that you've done in the past. So you can see how much you were able to um, get from them before and maybe raise that price a little bit because you've got it right here. You don't have to go through mountains of emails. God, email is terrible when dealing with brands. Um, you don't have to go through mountains of emails to find out well, how much did they pay when I've worked with MoviePass in the past. Okay, so you could put that, you know, we could put that number right there, whatever that happens to be. Um, right here, details link. Um, a lot of times they're, you're going to get a contract from this company. So I throw that into a Google Drive and then I link to it so that when I'm like, oh, you know what, I want to check the contract to see like, is it 90 days? Are they gonna pay 90 days after I post or is it uh, 60 days after I post? Whatever it happens to be, you know, I've got the details right there in that link. Uh, a lot of them will ask that you send an invoice. Uh, so if you send an invoice, then I usually click a little checkbox there. And then when they pay you, I put a checkbox right there. And then the date paid, uh, well, if I'm sending them an invoice, I probably sent it on the date that it was posted so I can compare the date posted to the date paid. And then I get a better idea of how long uh, did I have that covered up while I was doing? Yes, I did. You couldn't see it. So, you know, I've got my date posted right here and then I've got my date paid. So I can see how long does this company generally take to pay uh, when they need it or, or when they need to pay me. Next, we have data email. Okay, so what is this? This is, I don't even remember where I heard this advice, but it's really, really good advice. When you are working with a brand, after you have posted your video, generally, um, like a month later, send them an email saying, hey, can you tell me how many clicks I was able to generate for your brand? So how many times did somebody, you know, hear my spiel in my video and then be like, oh, you know what? Let me check that out. And then they click on the link. They're tracking all of that information. Why do you want to know that information? Well, you want to know that information because then you can say to other brands, hey, my last 10 videos generated this many clicks. And it, it seems like I must be pretty good at getting people to click on the links in my description. So uh, this helps me justify the price that I'm going to give to my advertiser. So uh, that's my spreadsheet and how I plan my entire year. Uh, not necessarily my entire year, but that's how I plan all of my videos out. I do have this set up in a way that basically it's going to have like all of your ideas. And but but what I like to do is when I get to the end of the year and I start planning for videos to the next year, I just duplicate the sheet add change the change the number from uh, 2023 to 2024. And I do have that linked down below so that you can use it if you want. Um, you've got your plan in place. Your blueprints are crystal clear. And now you know exactly what workouts you're going to do when you get to the gym. It seems like it's too easy, but that's where people start to make huge mistakes. And it's because they don't know how to decide if their plan is working or not. So if you want to make sure that your plan is solid, then watch this video right here.